Hey there! New to trigonometry? Don't worry, you're in the right place. So, what is trigonometry? In the simplest terms, it's the study of triangles, specifically how their sides and angles are connected. But hold on, we're not talking about any triangle. Our star of the show is the right-angled triangle, the one with a perfect 90-degree angle. Let's break down the parts of a right-angled triangle. First up, the hypotenuse, the longest side in the triangle. It's always right across from the right angle. Think of it as the triangle's VIP. It never changes its spot, no matter what. Now, let's pick an angle and call it theta. The side opposite to theta? We simply call it the opposite side. Makes sense, right? The side right next to theta, but not the hypotenuse? That's the adjacent side. But what if we switch things up and pick the other angle, beta? The hypotenuse stays put. Like we said, VIP status. The opposite side for beta is now where the adjacent side was for theta, and the adjacent side for beta swaps places with the opposite side. See how the names depend on which angle you're checking out? Step one in trigonometry is correctly spotting the hypotenuse, opposite, and adjacent sides based on the angle you're working with. Get this right, and you're already halfway to mastering trig. Here's where things get exciting, sine, cosine, and tangent. These three are the superheroes of trigonometry. For any chosen angle in a right-angled triangle, the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse is called the sine of that angle. The adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse is called the cosine of that angle. The opposite side divided by the adjacent side is called the tangent of that angle. To remember these ratios, there's one classic trick, so kato, a catchy phrase that sticks in your head like a favorite song. Scene is opposite by hypotenuse. Cosine is adjacent by hypotenuse. Tangent is opposite by adjacent. So katoa sounds like some ancient chant, right? But trust me, once you get it, you'll never forget it. This little phrase is your best friend for tackling trigonometry problems with ease. Let's see an example. Let's break it down with a right-angled triangle labeled ABC, where BC is the hypotenuse. For angle alpha, sine of alpha, the opposite side is AC divided by the hypotenuse BC. Cosine of alpha. The adjacent side is AB divided by the hypotenuse BC. Tangent of alpha. The opposite side is AC divided by the adjacent side AB. Now let's consider the angle beta. For angle beta, sine of beta. The opposite side is AB, divided by the hypotenuse BC. Cosine of beta. The adjacent side is AC, divided by the hypotenuse BC. Tangent of beta. The opposite side is AB, divided by the adjacent side AC. See how things flip depending on the angle? The hypotenuse stays loyal in its spot, but the opposite and adjacent sides switch roles. It's all about the angle you're looking at. All right, time to put what we've learned into action. Let's calculate the sine, cosine, and tangent for two angles, 30 degrees and 60 degrees. Let's start with the 30-degree angle. Step 1. Identify the sides correctly. The hypotenuse is 10, the opposite side is 5, and the adjacent side is 5 root 3. Now let's find those trigonometric ratios. Apply the right ratio using our trusty chant, so... Katoa. First, sine of 30 degrees, opposite by hypotenuse, 5 over 10, which simplifies to 1 half. Next, cosine of 30 degrees, adjacent by hypotenuse, 5 root 3 over 10, which simplifies to root 3 over 2. And finally, tangent of 30 degrees, opposite by adjacent, 5 over 5 root 3, which simplifies to 1 over root 3. Now let's move on to the 60-degree angle. Step 1 again, identify the sides. 
Let's calculate the ratios for sine of 60 degrees, opposite by hypotenuse, 5 root 3 over 10, simplifying to root 3 over 2. Cosine of 60 degrees, adjacent by hypotenuse, 5 over 10, simplifying to 1 half. And tangent of 60 degrees, opposite by adjacent, 5 root 3 over 5, which simplifies nicely to root 3. And here's the key takeaway. You can calculate sine, cosine, and tangent for any angle in a right-angled triangle, if you know the side lengths. Now that we've got the basics of sine, cosine, and tangent down, you might be wondering, why do these ratios even matter? Well, let's find out with a simple experiment. Here's what to do. Try drawing three similar triangles, all different sizes, but each with the same angle theta. You can grab a ruler and try this on your own. Now measure the lengths of each side. Your measurements might be different from mine. It's okay. First up, let's calculate the sine ratio, opposite divided by hypotenuse. For the first triangle, 5 divided by 11.2 equals 0.45. For the second triangle, 6.5 divided by 14.6. Yep, still 0.45. For the third triangle, 8 divided by 17.9. Guess what? Also 0.45. All the same. Pretty interesting, right? Next, the cosine ratio. Adjacent divided by hypotenuse. For each triangle, cosine of theta equals 0.89. Still no changes, no matter the triangle size. Finally, the tangent ratio, opposite divided by adjacent. For every triangle, tangent of theta equals 0.5. Do you see the pattern? No matter how big or small the triangle is, if the angle stays the same, the trigonometric ratios stay constant, like a universal rule. Since trigonometric ratios stay constant for a given angle, guess what? We don't have to calculate them every single time. There are pre-calculated value tables for each angle. And the best part? Your calculator can give you these values instantly. Why is this so helpful? Because now, when you're working with a right-angled triangle, you don't need to measure all the sides and crunch numbers to find the ratios. Instead, you can measure the angle, look up the ratio from a table, or use your calculator. Apply the ratio to find missing side lengths or angles. Quick and easy. Let's do some exercises. We're given a right-angled triangle with an angle of 40 degrees, the opposite side to that angle measuring 6 centimeters, and we need to find the length of the hypotenuse, L. Since we have the opposite side and need the hypotenuse, the perfect ratio to use is sine, because sine connects the opposite side to the hypotenuse. We know sine is opposite side divided by hypotenuse, so sine 40 degrees is 6 divided by L. To find L, we rearrange the equation. To get the value of sine 40, we have to use the calculator. Make sure your calculator is in degree mode, not radians. 40 and then select the sine. Now, sine of 40 degrees is 0 0.64. 6 divided by 0 0.64. So L is 9.37 centimeters. Here is our next problem. This time we are given an angle and the length of the adjacent side to the angle. Our goal is to find the length of the opposite side. To do this, we can use the tangent ratio because it connects the opposite side to the adjacent side. Since tangent of 55 degrees is equal to the opposite side divided by the adjacent side, we set up the equation. To find L, we multiply. L is equal to 2.5 times tangent of 55. Now, let's use the calculator. First, type 55, then press the tangent button. The tangent of 55 degrees is 1.42. Now multiply. 
2.5 times 1.42, which gives us 3.55 centimeters. The length of L is 3.55 centimeters. Pretty simple, right? Let's keep going. This is our last problem. This time, we are given an angle and the length of the adjacent side to the angle. Our goal is to find the length of the hypotenuse. To do this, we can use the cosine ratio because it connects the adjacent side to the hypotenuse. Cos 50 is 5 divided by L. To find L, we divide 5 by cosine of 50. Now let's use the calculator. First, type 50, then press the COAS button. The cosine of 50 degrees is 0 0.64. Now divide 5 by 0 0.64, which gives us 7.81 centimeters. The length of L is 7.81 centimeters. And that's it. Great job solving these trigonometry problems. That's all for today. If you think my contents are valuable to the world, you are welcome to join my Patreon community. Like and subscribe to Professor Mad for more interesting videos.